All right, CAD fans, in this video, we're going to take a step back and start from scratch. We'll, we'll not use a template this time. We'll just use imperial units and show you how you set everything up before you start drawing. The first thing you want to look at is the drawing units. You know, what, uh, you use English units or metric units and how, this, how are they going to be displayed? Up here in the type, let's pick engineering, so we're working in feet and inches, and that's inches and decimal. If you look at architectural, that would be feet and inches, but in fractions. So I think engineering is probably the one we're mostly going to use. And you want to make sure your precision is, is a decimal place beyond what you think you're going to have to draw to, just in case you need that, that extra level. Hit OK. Notice that the command down here showed underbar units. You can forget about the the uh, underbar. That just makes sure that it's in English. If you just type units, it comes up with the same thing. So if you can't remember the menu things, the command sometimes will get you there quicker. For example, how about limits? This specifies how big the screen area you're going to work on is. Uh, we'll start with zero, and but probably one foot by nine inches isn't a very big civil engineering drawing, so let's do 50 feet, comma, I'm just typing it in on the keyboard, 50 feet, and now we have a drawing that's 50 feet by 50 feet. Okay? Doesn't look like much, but that's what it is now. Now, if you didn't want to go through and remember all that stuff, type startup and then the number one, so we're turning this startup on. What that does is when we create a new file, it pops up this interface and if you use the wizard thing on the end, we can do quick setup. I won't go through the detailed one. Yes, I know. We can go through the same kind of choices. Let's do engineering and we want our thing to be 50 feet by 50 feet. Okay, notice that it changes to 600 by 600. The inches are actually the unit that we're using. So 50 times 12 is 600. So, right? That comes up with a very similar thing, except this time it turned the grid on for us, which is kind of nice. The grid gives us this reference to work from. If we want to check it out, right click. I know that popped off the screen, but I picked settings. And you've got a bunch of options here. The grid is on, and it's a spacing of half an inch by half an inch. If you're drawing in feet, you're probably not going to need to see anything better than that. Uh, if we major line, if we instead of make that 5, let's make it 24 so that every foot you're going to see a major line. Okay, So if we zoom in here a little bit, starting from 0, 0, or if we just, let's just draw a line. Let's draw a line. We'll start from there and draw over. And that is showing just about a foot, isn't it? I can also type in with the keyboard one foot and hit enter. There's a one foot long line. Similarly, you can type uh, 0 feet 8 inches and hit enter and it'll go down 8 inches. And if you go back over, so let's say we type in 12 inches. If I just type 12, it's going to assume that it's inches because we're working in inches essentially. And then back up, there's a box at 8 inches. All right. get out of that. We can also in that same grid settings turn the snap on. That makes it so that you can only click on stuff to the nearest half an inch. So if we zoom in a little farther, I start drawing a line. See how the cursor jumps between grid lines? It'll only go to the nearest half an inch, which may work out to be kind of handy. Another handy tool that you can use is to switch on the orthogonal mode or ortho mode with the F8 key. 
or turn it on that way. That way you can only go in rectangular directions. So notice it's not letting me do angles at all. I want to try to go to that, it just won't let me. So that's kind of handy if you're drawing all square lines. The other one that's kind of handy is similar. If I shut off orthogonal mode and turn on polar tracking, polar tracking makes it easy to set at 90 degrees, you know, all the different angles. It'll kind of snap to them, but it won't constrain you to only doing 90 degrees. If you right click settings on that, you can pick a different angle if you want to be able to snap to 45s for example. We can do that too. Another thing you may have noticed is as you move around you'll see these little green things come up. Green boxes. Those are snaps and they really help you to be able to connect everything in your drawing. See that's an endpoint snap right there. Those are controlled with the object snap button down here, which popped up on the other side of the screen, but settings. This you can turn it on and off, and then you can pick the different things. Maybe you want to be able to do midpoints, intersection extension. Those are the usual ones I like to have on. So that if we hit enter and get out of this, Sure, we'll see. We haven't saved anything in quite a while, have we? Let's save this as CA 10102, and we'll go back to playing with polyline. So you notice I can select right in the middle of that line, except that it's now conflicting with my grid snap. So let's shut that one off. shut off that snap and then we can be able to snap right to there. And back to the polyline. Now that hooks right to the midpoint and I don't have to figure it out from the XY coordinates where exactly that is. And then we could do, scroll out a little bit, if we could go to the midpoint of that line. So those are that's something that would take a bit of math to figure out, but it's pretty easy to do with the snaps. If you're right in the middle of the snap, or in the middle of drawing something, and you want to, you're not sure which snaps you can use, if you hold down the shift key and right click, it'll give you all the different snap options that you have available to you. So if we wanted to make sure we had a midpoint snap to go up to the side of this box, that would be easy to do. Another cool command is uh, what's called the from command. We just type it in. It wants to know the base point, where to start from. So if I want to draw something close to that, right, and then we have an offset. I want to start from four inches away and four inches away. Hit enter. It starts me four inches away from that. Okay. Here we are in an unused subway tunnel under New York City, uh, Manhattan to the west, Queens to the east. I think this is under the East River. Uh, yeah, that's how we got in there. That was the portion of the tunnel that had been built already. This is a project for that Kiewit Construction in New York City was working on. Uh, they're trying to extend the tunnel a little farther and unsuccessfully used a machine uh, for about a month and only got 27 feet in this hard rock. So just to check, if we went down four inches, I'll just type four inches, and then over four inches, yep, that line dried up, that that was four by four away from it. Now one thing you got to be careful about, hit the right mouse button, is uh, absolute reference in this case. You want to use a relative reference, which if you recall, you have to use the uh, at symbol for relative, the pound symbol for, for absolute. So let's, uh, let's get out of this and try that. Try a different way. So I've got, I haven't started to draw anything yet. 
type the from command I'm going to go from this point up here so I'll just left click there and I want to offset I'll use the at symbol to make sure that it's a relative offset and we'll go minus four inches and comma six inches up try that and then that puts my cursor starting right up there so it just automatically went up to that point I'll pan up a little bit to see how that looks and then we could continue drawing from there now notice that we are drawing some pretty small stuff here so let's take a look at the zoom command if we do all it puts us out to that full limits so there's our stuff drawn down in the, in the little corner there if we do zoom extents then it goes down to what we've actually drawn so you remember those commands because you can easily get lost sometimes